Well, welcome everybody to our 24th annual induction into the Surfing Walk of Fame. We have over 150 stones along the sidewalk here that are there and we're growing. I'd like to uh, invite up Father Christian Mondor uh, and to start our meeting off so that we're proper. Thank you, Father. Good and gracious God, Lord of the waves, big kahuna, and creator of all, the most merciful, we ask your blessing upon the new members of the Huntington Beach Surf City USA 2017 Walk of Fame, whose names will be recorded here on the sidewalk of Main Street and Pacific Coast Highway. Surfing pioneer Jeff Hackman, surfing champion Barton Lynch, local hero Timmy Reyes, surf culture Jim Hanks, woman of the year Pam Burridge, and members of the honor roll Huntington Beach High School 50th anniversary coaches Bill Garland, Bruce Gabrielson, Rob Hill, Chuck Allen, and Andy Verdone. May their contributions to the world of surfing keep us always stoked and may their memory be a lasting inspiration to all who love this sport. Bless them and keep them safe on land, in the water, and sometimes when they fly off the lip, in the air. <laughs> Bless and protect all of us who love sand and sea and surf, and all who work and play in this magical world environment. And Lord, we add this always, bless the great whites and keep them always in their space and not in ours. <laughs> Hear us as we pray that ancient Hawaiian prayer. Kumai, kumai, kanalanui mai, kahihi mai. Arise, arise, you great serfs from Kahiki. Who, kai ko'o aloha. Well up long raging surf and grant us surfers everywhere the joy of an endless summer and this we pray in the many names by which you are known and loved amen thank you father chris we'd like to invite the mayor to come up uh, barbara douglas and uh, give us a welcome, then we'll introduce other officials here, and some will have a comment to make. Yeah, hi everybody. Do you have any idea how cool it is to be the mayor of Surf City? Well, it's very cool. The coolest factor has a lot to do with our surfing community, who are a big part of our culture, and who have put us on the world stage. On June 20th, we celebrated International Surfing Day in a spectacular fashion by creating the largest recorded circle of honor. And in doing so, we earned a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest paddle out. Kudos to all the organizers, to Diana Dam, our fearless leader, all of us who showed support, especially to the 511 surfers who gave us the record. Yes, woo! You were one of them too, Diana. It was noted some, some, that by our residents, it was something extraordinary, an epic achievement. The event showed how well the city could put on a big affair, and we hoped it would sway officials planning the 2028 Summer Olympics to consider Surf City as the surfing village venue. I have it on good authority, also known as Don McAllister, that more surf events are planned to keep Surf City top of the mind as the surfing venue for the Olympics. So stay tuned. The Walk of Fame at Jax was founded in 1983, more than 24 years ago. Today, more than 2,000 ballots sent out worldwide to surfing notables to cast their vote in five categories. Honor roll recipients are selected by the board of directors and honor those who have contributed to the sport, but who do not always fit right into those five categories. 
This award event is held annually in conjunction with our US Open Surfing Champ Championship and Competition. And on Tuesday, out of abundance of caution, our beach was cleared of people as reports nearby of lightning striking and gave rise to some safety concerns. I'd like to really acknowledge our Marine Chief um, Safety Chief Mike Baumgartner, who did an outstanding job getting the beach cleared of 40,000 people in less than 20 minutes. Did you know that the World Surfing League is headquartered here? Well, they have scheduled surf contests all over the world, including China, who's putting together their first surfing team. And the Chinese team will be coached by none other than our local surfing legend, surf champion, Peter Townend. All right. So in closing, I'd just like to acknowledge that the surfing culture is a very important part of our city. Events such as the Paddle Out and the award ceremony raise public awareness and the respect of the sport as they enhance the importance and the romance of surfing. We fought hard for the right to, call, to be called Surf City. No one deserves it more than Huntington Beach with its dedicated surfers and remarkable residents. My congratulations to all the 2017 inductees. Thank you very much. Let's have a wonderful Surf Up Day. Thank you, Mayor. We also have with us in City Council this morning, Lynn Sameta, Eric Peterson, Pat Brendan, and Mike Posey. We also have uh, the honor of having Dana Rohrbacher with us here this morning. Dana, you want to come up and welcome us? Uh, for my first uh, few years in Congress, I was the, I was the best surfer in Congress. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, another one got elected after that. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, the, you know, surfing has been such an important part of my life. And let me just note, I had to stop surfing about two and a half years ago. Uh, and I want to warn you about this to the younger surfers. You wear out your cartilage in your arms. <laughs> but I want you to know this, that this arm was eight months ago, I had the operation, total replacement. This one, eight weeks ago, total replacement. <laughs> And I will tell you, two months from now, I'm back in the water. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I have some special certificates for those who are being honored today. And I'm going to leave them up here with you rather than trying to get up again. But I have a special presentation to Peter and Don. These, these folks have done such a great job for us in unifying this whole thing, making it a lot of fun and making it also formal in the sense that we're recognizing something really important in our lives. So we want to thank you, and I've got this special award. This is, uh, I'm going to hold on to these. Don and Peter, I have here a medallion uh, called, and this, I'm now enlisting both of you into the Freedom Surf Team. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you. God, Very good. Very good. There's nothing that exemplifies freedom more than the spirit we have here in this community about surfing. God bless us all. Let's go surfing again. There you go. You. Senator Jan Wynn has uh, here this morning, or her staff. My name's Phil Smith, and I'm here on behalf of State Senator Janet Wynn, and I too have uh, congratulations and best wishes and marvelous turnout, uh, great town, everything that everybody else has said, especially Father Mondor, who along with me are the two most overdressed people here. <laughs> congratulations to you all. The Senator has uh, provided lovely certificates of recognition for each of you. And I add my congratulations as well. Thank you very much. We've got a lot of city staff here. Uh, Julie Toledo, head of PIO, very important person, makes a lot of 
Our advertising very important in getting out into the world, and we appreciate the city support and all the support the mayor and council has given us uh, the last couple of years in really getting on the uh, world market. Is Kelly Miller here this morning? Kelly, are you here? There he is back there. He's hiding back there. He's head of the Visitors Bureau. And he helps advertise to the world Surf City, USA, Huntington Beach. Thank you, Kelly. So anyway, I'd like to turn it over to uh, PT, Peter Townen now to get into the meat of our program. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Now we get to uh, what I think is the most important part. We're gonna honor some people that have meant much to our culture and um, on this beautiful day here in Surf City. But like I do every year, um, if you look in the back of your program, uh, you'll see we have an in, in memoriam page and it hasn't been a good year for our, our world, our culture. Um, and we lost some of the inductees this year and every one of those inductees that you see there that were left us this year uh, always sent their ballots in every year. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I got a ballot from John Severson one week before with his votes for this year. And um, it told me how important what we're doing today is in that, in that someone like John Severson knew he was in his last days and he still filled out his ballot and sent it in because he wanted someone else to be recognized. And I, and I think just that alone needs a round of applause. Anyway, let's get to the, today, we're going to induct these new people. Uh, we, we start always with the honour roll. And uh, as uh, was mentioned by Barbara, by Mayor Barbara, it's the only category where we, the committee, actually decide to recognise people that uh, might be overlooked. And uh, this year is kind of a special group in that uh, it's the 50th anniversary of Huntington Beach having a high school surf team. I think that's pretty incredible. And in that period of time, there's only been five coaches. And uh, we're going to recognize those guys today. But to uh, start it off, we're going to have Principal Danny Morris come up and say a couple of words. Did, da did Danny turn up? Here he comes up the back there. I thought he'd be sitting up front next to Vadone. <laughs> How's everyone doing out there? We got any Oilers in the house here? Yeah, New alumni. always, absolutely. So uh, this is a very special day, not only for Huntington Beach High School, but the city. Um, as you know, Huntington Beach High School has been a mainstay here on Main Street since 1907. Um, and 50 years, almost half of our history, we've had a surf team. And so if you can imagine, in the 60s and 70s, one of our, our honorees this evening, any of them, coming in to the principal's office saying, hey, I got this idea. I want to start a surf class. I want to start a surf team. We are lucky to have people that were at Huntington Beach that had an open mind, had an open mind that surfing is a sport. Surfing is something that's special to a lot of people. And what our teachers saw was that this was the hook for kids. Huntington Beach High School's kids that surf on our team and in our classes come to school every day. You can't say that for a lot of surf teams that are out there. Huntington Beach High School is dedicated to making sure that these kids understand how valuable their education is. And so with that, I do want to recognize Andy Verdone, who I've been lucky enough to work with for the last three years. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be the principal of Huntington. I grew up on the goat hill up here, um, and I've always been around um, surfing, whether it's Newport, Huntington, etc. But when I came to Huntington, you know, there was always, there was this aura 
about Huntington Beach High School surf team. And when I first met Andy Verdone, I was, I was just blown away at the humility, um, blown away at what he and our four other coaches have built over time. And this is a part of our community. Our community knows Huntington Beach High School surf team. They know the kids are on that surf team. The last two years, our top 10 Oilers of the year, we've had surfers in that top 10. So breaking down those walls of, you know, what is a sport and what isn't a sport goes directly back to our honorees today for making surfing what it is, not only in the city, in the nation, but allowing um, our kids to have that hook in high school and stay there, be successful. So I would uh, like to invite up uh, one at a time the five coaches that had existed. Um, just to add to that, th this is a newspaper article from 50 years ago. And uh, this was the first guy that got it going as a club sport at the school, Bill Garland. And uh, so the first coach is Bill Garland. That's him there with uh, John Davis. And, uh, and it tells you about how, how it came about. Uh, after Mr. Garland got it going, Bruce convinced that it be recognized as a letter sport. And, uh, and from that day on, at the end of the year, you actually took surfing as a sport. And at the end of the year, just like other sports, you got one of those letters. And uh, Bruce Gableson was responsible for that. And then there was Chuck Allen. And uh, Chuck was there for a long, long time. His widow, Christine, and the family are here today. And uh, they're going to make their way up. And finally, Coach Verdone. Coach Verdone's been there now 30 years as the coach of the Huntington Beach High School surf team and still standing. And uh, the coach is going to say a few words on behalf of the group. On behalf of the coaches, I'll speak. We have a big program, and I'll just say a couple nice things about each one, and then we'll get on to our other inductees. And actually, I'd like to acknowledge them just now. First off, Timmy Reyes killed us when he was at Edison High. His, his coach, Zorn Forgerini, will someday be in the Walk of Fame. Jim Jenks, I look for my corduroy shorts. I. <laughs> I couldn't find them, but I, if you can get me another pair, I, we, I lived in OP. I loved to go to the OP Pro. We, it was, it made surfing what it is today. But Jeff Hackman, I had a poster of you on my bedroom wall with the surf muscle. You're pulling this barrel at sunset. I thought, there's no way I'll ever ride a wave that big. And you know what? I never did. Okay. <laughs> Pam Burridge, not just beautiful, but a great, phenomenal athlete, proving that women can be the superior to men on waves. They're, and i just a big fan, Pam, and I'm so proud that you're being inducted today. And finally, a guy I, I met years ago. We, went, we took some kids to the hot buttered, and you were always around, always mentoring. And I hope you take this as a compliment. You were, to me, the first intellectual world champion. You thought things out. I mean, I know you want to be the crazy. B b you are. I know. <laughs> I mean, you would think things out. And I studied your way. And I, I tell kids, get down early, study the waves, check the judges' heats, do your homework. And it, it, it pays off. And you can't just show up and when you got to do your work and Barton Lynch I'm a big fan I'm so proud of you okay so on to the surf team so try to understand when I'm I'm speaking about the coaches for 50 years in a little world that we're living in here in Huntington it's a big world of surfing and we're a small world where I am today is a result of the very beginning in the five coaches it culminated to where it is today so each and every one expanded the sport and uh, currently we take the kids all over the world and everywhere we go we're known because of the footsteps that they walked on first okay I'll start with Bill Garland who worked at Huntington High as a driver's ed teacher and a health teacher 
He was one of the most popular teachers because he teaches health. He teaches kids about, you know, all the cool stuff that they're just coming into as a teenager. You know, Bob Dreyfus down there in the stands knows he took over the science department health and he knows Bob got teacher of the year every year. Bill was teacher of the year. Bill and this well-known hot ripper named John Davis started this club. And trust me, I used to coach the ball sports. I used to coach football and baseball and do the track and field. And I was a traditional athlete that surfed. PT was a great surfer who wanted to be a traditional athlete. We roomed together for years and he always used to argue that athletes are athletes. And I said, uh, John Elway just won the Super Bowl. It, that's the coolest thing. But Slater just won. He goes, Verdone, it's the same thing. They're at the pinnacle at the top of every sport they do. And I learned a lot from PT, and I learned a lot from the people before me. And Bill Garland taught me. Bill broke his leg. He's up north at Lake Topaz with his family, recuperating. He sent his grandson. Now, look, little thing about grandson. Went to Edison, played basketball, Hall of Fame there, all-time leading scorer, the only jersey ever retired at Edison High, Dylan Garrity. So Bill was two things when I first met him. First day I walked into HB High in 83, we're sitting in the lunchroom, and I, we used to hang out in the lunchroom. And we got into it for something. He goes, Andy, what do you want me to do? I'm only trained to do two things. I'm a teacher, and I'm a Marine. I can teach you how to do it right, or I can kill you. <laughs> and that was, that's Bill Garland. OK. So Bill got the ball rolling, started a club. And the other coaches, they were losing athletes. Like Robert August was a traditional athlete that was sneaking away surfing. You know, so they didn't like that. They didn't like that. And then this big, strong wrestling hall of famer who also surfed was a great surfer and a great board shaper and a great mentor to kids, started the first varsity surf team, who was given athletic awards. You know, the H block on our jerseys that you could walk around campus and be the big man on campus. Bruce Gabrielson, right here. And if you look at Bruce, the snake, not just a great leader of young people, but a mentor to anyone. If you have time, he could teach you. You've, if you research him, you can find volumes on the man. And it, I've done so recently because I knew I'd have to speak today, and I wanted to do him justice. And I quite, I'm quite sure that we say talk story. If Bruce got going, he could write several books. So Bruce Gabrielson, thank you. Thank you for your contributions. Some of the some of the surfers like Fignetti right there, and I know Mike Downing and Nishi and some of the Jay Bolt, they all speak volumes about you, Coach. So thank you so much. Moving on to the next coach. It brings me a little sadness because Rob Hill isn't with us any longer. He, had, he passed away a couple years ago, and he was also a mentor with to me, he was our woodshop teacher at Huntington Eye. And I used to go in and there was a poster on the wall that said, uh, hot buttered pro junior and, and another contest that he took this young man, Bud Lamas over to, and a guy named Joey Baran. Rob Hill, a high school teacher. Could you imagine, okay, Rob, you're gonna take Bud Lamas and Joey Baran to Australia. You're invited to a prestigious surf event that the only international kids that were invited Joey being the pro, Bud being the am, you know? And it was, it was such an honor. And Rob was so chill, Rob Hill chill. He would relax the kids. I learned that from Rob is, you know, you can't be overamped. You have to be chilled out. You have to be relaxed before your heat. You don't want to, you can't hit a curveball when you're gripping the baseball bat with all the blood coming out of your, your uh, knuckles. You got to relax a little. You got to. Do your homework like Barton taught us, and relax a little, and go out there and be smart. So Rob Hill was one of the founding fathers also of the NSSA, him and Chuck, and I'll get to Chuck later, but Rob was one of the founding fathers, and he's also in the Walk of Fame earlier. So Rob Hill, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Bud Lamas is representing Rob.
Moving on to the next gentleman who truly, truly was my mentor in coaching. I was interviewed, he was on the panel. There was also Neo Post and Mark Austin were on the panel with uh, Dave Van Horbeck, our then athletic director, and the late Daryl Strawberry. Uh, still wagon, Daryl Strawberry, that's good, Andy. But Rob chose me to take over and I was very afraid. I was following a legend who had five national titles and he did things first class. He ran a bank, he coached winners and I was taking over and I'm going, wow, where do you go from here? You know, he goes, Verdon, you gotta go higher and better. So he invited me to his first banquet and I'll never forget it was at the old Limborg Racket Club and he's got all these rows of bikes and these big money scholarships and he's handing out college scholarships to surfers. And I've been to a million banquets and I've never seen that. So we continue that today and for years we've handed out these big scholarships at our annual banquet and he would give out these bikes that he went and, and got sponsorship for. And I thought this is the first time I've ever seen this. Chuck Allen did that. Chuck always wanted to get, go bigger, go better, do it one more than the next guy or next gal. Didn't matter. And Chuck was, Chuck was there to win. And I knew it because, and I always tell a great coach by how, many, how much people talk smack on you. When you go into a, a strange city and they go, oh, you're, I'm glad Chuck Allen's gone. That guy was not, I go, yeah, he beat your, didn't he? Yeah. And when they talk smack on you, you know you got something going on, Timmy. Okay. So, <laughs> Timmy, you're a legend. I'm never going to ride the waves you ride. Never. Ghost tree, really? Really? So, to wrap up, Chuck, you can never wrap it up. I will leave you with this. He probably, like Bruce, Bruce is in the Hall of Fame of wrestling. Chuck Allen is in the Hall of Fame of surfing and snowboarding. He gave the world, because he's the founding father of the NSSA, and he's the founding father of the United States Snowboarding Organization. He gave the world Tom Curran to Sean White. And that's the legendary Chuck Allen. <laughs> Represented by his wife and family, his kids, and we had a little hug and a, we shed a tear earlier. Congratulations. And then moving on to me. <laughs> Best thing I ever did was become the surf coach because it gave me my beautiful wife, Shannon, right there, Verdone, and my son, Andrew Verdone, and my daughter, Annabella Marie Verdone. My mom's there too, hi, Audrey, mommy. So that's what it gave me. Without the surf team, I never would have met what I'm really all about, and that's family. And, and here in surfing, we are family, and I'm a little long-winded here. But in the words of Bill Morehouse, party check, it's on today. Let's have fun. Roy Miller's here, legendary athletic director of Huntington. We got Ian Dominelli, Hall of Fame out of, uh, in college football. And of course, Fabian Luna, I see. And any other teachers in the audience really acknowledge you. Support your local surf shop. See you later, thank you. Yeah, a lot of history there. Um, I remember when I first came to Huntington uh, a long, long time ago, 1977, and uh, and I was befriended by uh, by uh, Chuck Allen and Rob Hill for the NSSA, and all of a sudden, next thing I was helping out with the Huntington High School, and that ended up I then coached the uh, feeder program for the Dwyer Middle School for 10 years. Uh, when my boys were in school. So another round of applause for the Huntington High School surf team. 50 years. <laughs> now we get to the inductees and uh, we're going to start off with the local hero. And um, I have a great local hero story. Um, when Jimmy Rays was trying to qualify um, for the uh, World Championship Tour, uh, he had to go to Newcastle. Kind of nobody knew who he was. And uh, he turned up in Newcastle, 
And Newcastle, just like the US Open of Surfing, is one of the hardest contests in the world to compete in. Uh, there's no question. Uh, Barton and Pat O'Connell will attest to that. They, they went to Newcastle a few times, and even this old bloke, I won it in 1973, and it ain't easy. And um, Timmy Rays was in a heat early on with Luke Egan. Now, Luke Egan, the Egans are like royalty in Newcastle. And, uh, you know, everyone thought that uh, Luke was already, like, on tour and he was going to eat Timmy Rays up. No chance. And, uh, and Timmy was so determined that he, he wanted to get on the world tour that he actually paddled over Luke, Luke right over the top of him at Main Beach and took the wave off him. And I'm going, mm, this might not be good back on the beach <laughs> in Newcastle. Anyway, they didn't call interference on Timmy. Timmy got through the heat and Luke got knocked out. And uh, when I saw that that day, I knew Timmy Reyes was going to make the world tour. Because you don't go half around the, halfway around the world to Australia, to Newcastle, with that kind of determination unless you're going to make the world tour. And he did it that day. And it's my great honour to bring Timmy Rays up here, local hero, Huntington Beach. never thought this day would ever happen or um, be even close to uh, such a cool moment and uh, I'm glad to share it with uh, family and friends and uh, wow what, just, what, just, what a cool honor and um, thank you Walk of, Walk of Fame for such a uh, great thing and um, I don't know really how to begin because there's just too much to thank for for this moment and um, it's just a huge honor um, like I said like PT said, I just got home and I'm a little injured at the moment, but we're good. We're good to go. Um, but again, um, uh, I just want to thank my mom and my dad. Uh, wow, um, for being there. Every moment uh, in my adult or young adulthood, um, from all the way to a little kid and. If it wasn't for them, I, I wouldn't be able to pedal my bike down the windy beach to go surf Huntington every single day uh, with, you know, bloody hands and <laughs> all the bumps and bruises along the way. This, this, uh, this wind is strong here. <laughs> when you ride a bicycle a long ways, you really know it. And um, I, I learned everything out front at the pier here, and I met a lot of awesome people. And um, I mean, this is where I learned everything. And um, without my parents taking me to all the events and, and doing the things that they did, that I, there's no repaying back to what, what they did for me. Um, it's really cool. Uh, again, this is not, uh, I didn't write anything down because I really didn't know quite, what quite to say because Check out all those names on the street there, on both sides. It's just really cool to be part of this, this program. I just, wow, I can't wait to just spit on my own name over there. <laughs> um, but um, there's so many uh, good stories that has happened along the way of uh, my career. And a lot of it has to do with um, uh, man, sponsors, it really is, and uh, uh, Garth Tarlow at O'Neill um, believed in me, uh, and I've been at O'Neill now for uh, 20 years, wow. and um, I don't know what he saw, but I guess it's okay. <laughs> um, so, again, surfing is just fun, and that's kind of how the way it started for me, and uh, if you're not having fun and you're really not, it, it's really hard to be good at something. Um, I love surfing and it's brought me all my friends and uh, my dad's a really good surfer, my sister's a good surfer, my mom surfs. <laughs> I'm trying to get Megan out there a little more. <laughs> um, but, you know, being a part of this again is just so awesome and 
There's so many good surfers in the world, and I'm just one of them to be, be on here today, and I, I'm very happy. And, and um, I'm so, look at these guys, they're next to my name over here. I mean, I looked up to everyone at here, and Verd, <laughs> I remember the first time I actually was in high school, and uh, I drove down to the pier because the pier, it blocks the wind a lot here. We, have, we get a lot of wind in the winter. Um, and river jetties is where um, I pretty much grew up surfing. And, um, and it just gets windy over there early mornings. And uh, Zorin Forgerini, my high school coach, uh, he's like, yeah, you can go over there. I'll let you go surf the pier. I pulled up in the parking lot, and I was getting ready. And Verge just comes right up to me, slams on his brake on his Ford Explorer. I never forget about it. What are you doing here? <laughs> he thought I was going over there to start some trouble with the boys. But uh, being in such a small city, uh, all of us were friends. And um, we all served with each other. And I think he realized that pretty quickly once I didn't want to start any trouble with the Huntington boys. <laughs> um, Again, I'm from Edison, like, like this guy, he's, he's got his jersey hanging up inside there. Um, and I'm pr really proud of it. It was just down the street from my house. Um, and I'm proud to be uh, a Huntington local and I've and, uh, been able to travel the world and seen beautiful places and having the chance to still keep doing it is um, awesome. Um, again, this is a, a, a very, very awesome uh, thing and I'm very happy to be a part of it and thank you Walk of Fame. Thank you. Yeah, Timmy's as local as it comes in Huntington Beach without question. Well, the next gentleman I'm going to introduce uh, our world owes a lot to. Um, if, you, if you actually look in the program, you'll see there's a pair of uh, white corduroys, walk shorts. <laughs> I dare say nearly every one of us here had a pair of those white corduroy walk shorts at one point in time. And um, I remember when I got here the first time in 72, OP was just a surfboard company. Actually, Chia Critchlow was on the US team and he was riding a... a uh, Ocean Pacific Surfboard at the World Contest in San Diego in 72. And uh, somewhere around that time, Jim, I think, convinced Don Hansen to let him start the OP line of clothing. And this, this city here, Huntington Beach Surf City, owes an incredible amount to the next man I'm bringing up, Jim Jenks. When he founded OP, he had the foresight to understand that marketing was huge. And... Um, and immediately he was doing contests and stuff, but even before that, th this is Chuck Allen and Jim Jenks right here of the NSSA. <laughs> and uh, Ian Cairns. And, uh, and the OP Pro hadn't even happened yet. And, um, and then because of that relationship, uh, Ian convinced Jim to sign off on the OP Pro. And the first ever big world rank contest in California was the OP Pro in 82 right here in Huntington Beach, and it, and it changed surfing because it was the first time there was stadium atmosphere. And we had the priority buoy. Who remembers the buoy? They didn't used to call it out. You had to paddle around it, right, Pam? Martin, were you around for the, the buoy races, right? <laughs> and you had to paddle around it to get, to get the... Uh, and there were some classic races to the buoy. You know, guys would climb over each other to get around the buoy first, and the girls too. And we had instant scoring. Never, never, never had been done before. Uh, Meg Bernardo's out there somewhere. She was working for Ian, Cairns and I, and uh, she used to run from the third story of the scaffolding down the stairs, and she'd post the scores, and then the commentators would call them out so the audience knew. There was no computer. It was manual Meg up and down the stairs. <laughs> And of course, Jim's foresight also, if you look in the program, he uh, believed in sponsorship of athletes. And at the time, uh, probably the most sponsored surfer in the world 
was a great surfer, Larry Bertelman, that, that Jim had signed a big contract to that they wrote up in the magazines. And of course, the OP Pro lasted through its whole era to across the street today, we have the US Open of Surfing. But if it wasn't for the OP Pro, we wouldn't have the US Open of Surfing. And it's a great honor for me to bring up Mr. Jim Jenks. It all happened because of him. People that I really want to thank, people that helped OP get started, and, uh, and tell you just a little bit about my background in it. Um, I went to work for Don Hansen, selling boards during the day, rubbing rails at night, and uh, was in surfing a lot, all the time. And I was lucky enough to be associated with LJ, uh, Mike Doyle, Rusty, Chir Critchlow, people like that that were in and out of the shop all the time, surfing with them, watching them in contests. And I, I noticed that there was one fundamental thing missing. There was no, there, were, there was no real pair of trunks that was, that was made for a guy that surfed. I don't know if you guys remember Rusty when he used to surf early on. He wore these things that were so tight, so tight and so short, they, they looked almost obscene, you know? You know? And I mean, LJ got trunks to fit him, but other guys, they, I mean, it was, it, and, and Doyle was always trying something different. Had to be longer, had to be shorter, had to be wider, had to be this. And so I was lucky enough that we were, we had the opportunity to uh, sell our boards in a lot of surf shops, and I was in a lot of different surf shops, and there was a need for a really good pair of trunks, a really good pair, one that fit, one that was a little higher in the waist, one that wouldn't come up in your crotch when you jumped up on the board, things that fit, things that dried quick, and, and that was where OP started. I talked Don Hansen into letting me start it there, and uh, uh, we, we start, I worked in the back of the shop at night, and uh, we sewed, and we made trunks, and we put them on surfers, and everybody went, and it went from there. So the big thing is, is that I had no money. I had an idea. So I had to figure out how can I make these trunks? And I wanted to make some walk shorts. I wanted to make some cord walk shorts. How could I do this? Well, there's a family I'm sure you're all aware of, the Hoffman Fabrics, Hoffman family, and they made fabrics, and they have sold to everybody in here, I know. But Walter was, took me under his arm, said, look, kid, you know, I'll sponsor you with this, I'll help you out do this, and I'm, I'm gonna give you credit. And the only reason I'm giving you credit is because you surf. <laughs> God, that is incredible. And so I started making trunks and started doing it. Well, like everybody else, we need customers. We had to have customers. There's only one place to be when you're starting out, Jack Surf Shop, the only place. So I'm up here on my hands and knees going, Bobby, Ron, please put my stuff in, please, like that. And they put it in and it sold and we built a relationship together that whenever I was in trouble and I needed money to cover some checks or something like that, I could call them up and they'd drive down in a van and we'd load it up with goods and they'd come back up here and they'd save my life. So I don't think, I don't think that there ever would have been an OP if it hadn't been for Jax and the Hoffman family, the Baptists. They were really great. Um, when we, ex our, our brand literally exploded. We were so lucky. I mean, it just it, it exploded. Our, our business was, it was doubling every single year, you know, and it, things were going big, big fast. And, and cause we were like the only guys really out there that was making this stuff. And, and all of a sudden there were surf movies and surf music and everything was happening. And this movement was moving across the country. And we were lucky we were on that wave. We were just on that wave, and it, and it took us, and it went big. And it was, it was through 
the, the help of a lot of good people that came in to, to make things really work for us. And, uh, you know, I'd like to say that guys like Gary Michaels, I don't know of a better national salesman in the world. The best, the best, you know. Production, Rex King does everything, you know. Sales, Garrett was there. We had, we had uh, really good backroom people. We had people that believed in the brand that really wanted to go forward with it and make it go, and, and it was super. And then we also had uh, Balmagus, he's our attorney. He kept me out of trouble. He was always a guy to keep me out of trouble. But uh, it, it's, I, I, I really want to thank the, the uh, Surfing Walk of Fame Association for doing this. I'm so honored and uh, I, I just, I'm just, don't know what to say anymore. I mean, just honored and, uh, and thank you very much. Thank you very much for the time. Wow, up next for me is pretty special. Um, I didn't even know this guy when, when I saw this photo of uh, a guy doing the bottom turn at Sunset Beach. And uh, I went, one day I might get to Hawaii and be able to try to do that at Sunset Beach. And then this movie came out uh, with a whole bunch of uh, video grabs uh, well, they weren't videos in those days, they were surf movies, that we didn't have any videos. <laughs> and, uh, and it was for Golden Breed, and, and we thought that company was the coolest. And uh, their sponsored athlete was Jeff Hackman. And um, so in 1972, at that same World Contest, Jeff Hackman uh, is down there on the Hawaiian team. And uh, I was going to Hawaii for the first time, and of course, he had won the Duke contest in 1965 as a teenager at Sunset. And I went, it might be a good idea to follow this guy around. <laughs> I, I, might, I might learn something in the lineup if I follow him around at Sunset. So I got to know a guy, uh, Mike Eaton, who, who was making some boards for all of us. And uh, I got one of Mike's boards. And um, next thing I know, I'm in the finals of the Duke contest with Jeff Hackman in 1972 on a, on a board that w was, I'd got because of, the, because of him. And then Eaton was making us a few more. Every time he wanted to get rid of one, I went and got the other one. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, we ended up together in the final in the legendary Thanksgiving day at Waimea Bay in 30 foot plus, which bonded every one of us for life. I mean, Fred Hemming sent us out when there were closeout sets coming across the bay at 30 foot. I remember us all looking at each other going, we actually weren't hassling for the ways. We were, we were, we were actually going, hey, uh, do you want this one? <laughs> and, uh, and that day, R Reno Abalera, who we inducted here two years ago, won. And uh, Hackman was second. Clyde I. Cow was third. And I got fourth. And, uh, and Hackers and I, of course, had a lot of other adventures. Um, one of those being Quicksilver. We went to Australia, he won bells, and we had a bit of a drunken and disorderly night with Alan Green at the Torquay pub. <laughs> and the next thing you knew, Jeff Hackman and Bob McKnight started Quicksilver, which is in our hometown here in Surf City today. So it's my great honor to bring up a great influence on my life, Jeff Ackman. Wow, this is, this is such a privilege. Um, I'd like to thank the, uh, just the board of directors and all the officials that has made this possible today. It's a, it's a real honor to me. Um, yeah, Peter and I go back quite a ways and um, I just gotta say one thing here. Like when Peter was talking about surfboards, <clears throat> 
I'd ask Peter, I'd go, hey, Peter, you know, you know this board you had like uh, two years ago or something? You kind of remember that board? And Peter would whip out this little book, and he had all the measurement. He was the most detailed surfer on surfboards I've ever seen, you know? Anyway, um, Huntington Beach. Okay, Huntington Beach. Uh, I have really a lot of memories of Huntington Beach. Um, one of my first memories is, um, well, I grew up in Torrance Beach in the South Bay, and uh, that's it. I, I just got this Haggerty's uh, honorary T-shirt today, this morning, so. Anyway, my father used to bring me down the coast in about 1958, 50, 58, 59, and the thing that stood out the most to me was Tin Can Beach. Like, uh, it was unbelievable. There were so many freaking tin cans on that beach. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, a couple memories in the middle 60s was the Golden Bear, Janis Joplin. That place was fantastic. So much good music went through there. Later on, 1969, um, I actually lived here for about three months on Plastic Fantastic. Uh, Bill Fury, like Greg Tucker, the Chapman brothers, uh, Bob and Tom Leonardo, uh, Roy Crump sitting right there, um, John Boozer, so many, so many characters. I mean, for sure there's a lot of good surfers that have come out of Huntington Beach, but I have to say more than that, the characters. There have been so many freaking characters coming out of this place. It's unbelievable. Um, kind of when I was about 12 years old and sort of after I left Torrance Beach and Haggerty's and moved to Hawaii, we were surfing, uh, we had a little gang. We had like this little gang kind of, not really a gang, but at uh, Baby Queens in Waikiki. And um, it consisted of David Nueva, uh, Reno Abalera, Tom Stone, Barry Kaniapone, myself, and uh, if you would have told me then, if you would have asked me then, who's a pioneer, I would have gone, well, Duke Hanamoku, you know, Greg Knoll, um, George Downing, um, Rabbit K. Kai, um, Paul Strau, um, and I never ever would have thought of the concept of being a pioneer, like, I want to be a surf champion, not a pioneer, you know? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here it is 60 years later, and the, the honor of being inducted along with some of these people I've respected for more than 60 years is phenomenal. I mean, I look at that list of people, the pioneers, and um, just, like, I've, I've respected and honored these people for so long, and it just blows my mind that I am now a pioneer, you know? So, anyway, uh, maybe it's good to be a pioneer, because a pioneer is sort of timeless, and if you're a champion, that can kind of, you can kind of come and go, you know? <laughs> so, it's such an honor, it's a privilege, and uh, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain how how deep this affects me. Um, you know, sir